Well, howdy out there. It's uh, Phil Rose, the founder of the American People's Liberty Party. And uh, I watch the uh, Meet the Press and Face the Nation. Of course, that 30 minute program, what is it, Face the Nation? Or is that Meet the Press? I forget. Had uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney on there. And that wasn't too interesting because, you know, Tom Hartman and many other people consider him a war criminal. <laughs> There is that out there selling a book, which I would never buy. But anyway, um, what I wanted to say was that, you know, uh, one of those two programs is all about jobs in the economy. And uh, in my opinion, when Richard Nixon went to Congress, uh, went to China, I'm sorry, he uh, opened up the trade routes or whatever with China. And now we're suffering for it because all the manufacturers in America have moved their operations to China so now the Chinese people are getting uh, you know a little bit more money every day but the American middle class is, is disappearing so um, the only people that can really survive are the ones who invest in Wall Street and sit around the pool and wait for their dividend check and the politicians who get big salaries paid by our tax money and right now there's 50 percent of America is in poverty. Fifty percent, I think it was forty-eight percent. So I have one big giant solution for to help uh, our treasury, you know, increase its revenue. And that would be to put like for every item that's sold that comes from China, you put a two dollar tax on it at the checkout stand. So you have all these dealers and, and stores and whatever, like Walmart. Anything that comes from China, they have to put into their computer. When it's scanned, there has to be a $2 tax. And you can, you'll see right away, people will stop buying those things from China. And uh, the, these guys who, these expatriates or whatever they are, turncoats or traitors to American people, who took their factories to China will suddenly go, hey, wait a minute, uh, nobody's buying our stuff because there's this $2 tax on every item. Bingo, they'll bring their factories back. And uh, I think there was some kind of a rhetoric uh, the president was saying, well, let's uh, give them a tax break to bring their factories back. <laughs> but see, a corporation, you know, they're uh, like, uh, an inhuman entity that just tries to make money by whatever means. Let's take the, uh, the oil industry. If you see the, uh, you have to see this video. It's a documentary called Gas Hole. Gas Hole, and it's on Free Speech TV and I think Link TV. And if you tune into one of those, if you can find it and watch it, or maybe you can get it on the web or something, you'll find out that the oil company was just one company in the beginning. And the government broke them up, just like they broke up the AT&T phone company. But what happened was that even though they broke them up into different names, you know, like Sunoco and, and Mobile and Shell, and they were all once part of the Standard Oil Company in America. It was a monopoly. Even though they were broken up into different names, they still stuck together, and they were all in collusion as to how to raise their gasoline prices. So since that's happening and they're betraying the working people of America, I would say that it's time to nationalize the American oil uh, industry or whatever and uh, make them sell back all their shares of stock to the people who have bought them, make this a, a national, uh, you know, make the oil industry nationalized and let the government decide what the price of gasoline is going to be. You know, not these guys who say, "Oh, well, it's Labor Day, ha <laughs> ha, let's raise it up ten cents or twenty cents or a dollar," because these fools out there who are buying our gas, they're stupid and they'll they'll, they'll pay for it because they got to go go to work and make their money. And then I say, after we nationalize the oil industry, put all the CEOs in jail, hold them in jail, and give each one a trial and see which ones are the crooks and which ones were the innocent ones. And the ones who were crooks, 20 years in jail for stealing from the American people. 
Now, you know, uh, I'm paying the price for my videos, in my opinion. For example, uh, when I lived in California, I worked in California most of my life in security and police work. When I retired, uh, at, I retired early at 62 because I had a lot of pain and I really couldn't do anything, couldn't work too much. So it took me about a year or so before I could finally go back to work. And I did, I went back to work for another couple of years. And in those couple of years I made twice as much because I was working for a casino or uh, two different casinos than I ever made, um, uh, before I retired. Okay, so uh, when you turn 65, they give you, uh, if, you, if your Social Security check isn't up to the poverty level, and from what I understand now, I, I heard on TV, the national poverty level is $1,100 a month. Okay, so California said, well, you only get X number of dollars. We're going to bring you up to the uh, poverty level with SSI. You can't get a disability because you're over 65. See, when you're over 65, they won't let you sign up for disability, which would be like a check for around $1,200 a month. They got some really weird laws. Like, you ever watch Star Trek? And did you ever hear of Philbin, where the Captain Kirk has been held prisoner by a couple of... Um, extraterrestrial guards and him and Spock are sitting there they said well let's play some Philbin and in Philbin you know like a three of clubs is is wild but only if the moon is full on a Thursday you know things like that so security has rules like that like Philbin so <laughs> I get this letter recently in the mail and it says well you move to another state and this other state doesn't pay for um, uh, Medicare Part B and so you have to pay us back for the last whatever, unless you take care of this and sign a paper and come in and blah, 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 blah. And I said, what? I never asked for Part B anyway. All I wanted was Part A, which was free. That's what I signed up for at age 65 when the papers came to me in the mail, and I sent them back in the mail. And then when I went uh, to uh, Social Security uh, about 65 and a half, and I said, look, I can't work anymore my spine and my shoulder, I just can't lift anything, I can't do anything. I can hardly walk. I started walking and I started throwing up, you know. Nevertheless, um, I guess from that uh, encounter when they gave me the SSI to bring me up to the poverty level, they uh, also included Part B because it came in the mail. I said, oh, now I got Part B, how did I get that? So now this state says, well, you can't have Part B we don't pay for Part B. If you want Part B, you've got to go to welfare. Now, wait a minute. Social Security was set up so that American seniors would have dignity. They wouldn't have to go to welfare. But this state is a cheapskate SOB. <laughs> Maybe some of you might know what state I'm in, but I'm not going to say it in this video. Anyway, SSI should be uniform all across the country, and so should, you know, if they give you SSI and you're, and you're injured or sick or whatever, and they want to give you Part B, it should be in every state, not just California, you know. In other words, California should lead the way because they are the, were the very fair, you know, and generous, and did what they should do. Whereas the other states are cheapskate, flintskins, Scrooge McDucks. <laughs> so I'm paying the price. I had to go all the way, it was like 15 miles, driving to the to the Social Security office in heat that was unbearable in my car the air conditioner don't work it worked for a few days and then it stopped working so I get there and I have to walk like a whole block to get to the damn door by the time I got in the office I started feeling nauseous had to go into the restroom and dry heaved I'm saying damn what's wrong you know and I could feel my lungs were hurting from dry heaving you know so uh I recovered after about 10 minutes and then I went to the window and, oh, you're in the wrong office, you've got to go next door. After waiting in line with a number, you know. So I go next door and I'm finally called to the window and, and uh, I'm asking these, this guy, it seemed like he was from Iran or someplace. He had an accent and he didn't look, you know, like an American to me. 
And he couldn't answer none of my questions. So he's going running back to the supervisor for every question I ask him. Finally, the supervisor comes to the window, and he can't answer my questions. So I propose that anybody who works for Social Security has to take an IQ test so that they're smart and they know what the hell they're doing. Because they don't know what the hell they're doing in Social Security. I'm sorry to say that, but it seems like our system is deteriorating. They hire low IQ morons and make them supervisors. No, 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 no. Sacred security is a sacred trust for the seniors of America. Not to be toyed with. And like Eisenhower said, any politician that would mess with Social Security would end up in the dustbin of history. Now both parties want to mess with Social Security. The Republicans are crazy. They want to cut everything out. Like this guy Perry and uh, uh, Ron Paul saying, Oh, these are Ponzi schemes, and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> and then the, Republic, the Democrats are allowing stuff to be put on a table for cutting. No, 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 no. Two parties going to be in the dustpin of history. We don't want these two parties. They do not represent the senior American. They don't represent any American. They represent themselves and the rich people, the corporations. And if Americans don't see that, then I'm sorry for you Americans out there who don't see that. Wake up. Watch Tom Hartman. You know, if you don't have him on your, on your dish or on your direct TV, uh, go sign a petition to get him on cable TV. You know? He's the only one with any brains in this country that knows what's wrong with America and how to fix it without hurting people. Now, the Republicans think, oh, yeah, we can pull out of this recession, which we're heading back into again, just by cutting down the poor. Yeah, just shoot them down or whatever. You know? <laughs> so, I've been paying the price. They, they cut my uh, SSI in half. And if the poverty level is $1,100 and they want me to live on 700 they're my enemy. They're the enemy of the people, the enemy of the, of the senior. And if they take away Medicare Part B, which was free from the state of California, they're again they're the enemy of the people. So what do we do about that? Well, people, we have to get together, you know. First of all, we got to, I say, you know, write in Tom Hartman for president. That means if, if you live in a state where write-in votes aren't allowed, find out if it's so in your state and make them change that law so that you can write in a president because you know the, the Democrats and Republicans will say oh well if you vote for a third party uh, you're just watering down the votes for the Democrats and the Republicans will win no 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 there's 70 million American seniors out there if every one of them was brought to the polls to vote that would that would put in any third party so I say, you know, you guys out there who have parents who are on Social Security, because they're going to cut them, they're good. you're going to end up taking care of them. You're going to end up having to buy them food. Or your grandparents, if these Republicans get their way. And the Democrats aren't much better, because they're sold out to corporations too. You know, like Barack Obama, he wrote a book, oh my goodness. Who do you think bought all those copies? I bet you it was some corporation that bought all those copies and made him a millionaire. So now he don't care. He know he found, you know, the routine, the ticket to how to get rich. He don't give a damn about American people. He cares about getting reelected, maybe. But personally if I was him, I wouldn't want to be reelected because it's a terrible record. God, you know. The American people have to get together. This is gonna be like the last time you can save the systems that we have in America because if you lose this election if this election goes to the Republicans I feel sorry for everybody in the middle class anybody who wants to retire on Social Security because look if you buy a, a private retirement plan they're going to put it into Wall Street Wall Street's going to fail just like it did back in the 30s there's going to be a you know a crash we're repeating history wake up guys put your money in gold don't put no money in the private retirement fund that puts it into Wall Street and gambles with it don't do that put your money in gold and silver because even gold I think after the last depression they made having gold in your possession illegal 
So if you've got gold, convert it to silver, or to jade, or to diamonds. Because <laughs> they can't get all those things, you know what I mean? They can't make them all illegal. But for some reason they made gold illegal. I remember because my father was telling me my grandmother had a lot of gold coins. He said, oh, well, in the 30s or 40s they passed the law, you can't have these, it's against the law. So like a dope, she goes out and changes them in. She should have just said, well, don't worry about it, it's my business. And she should have held on to them. And now that it's all legal again, she could have became a zillionaire. But of course she's not alive any longer. Or at least her children could have benefited from it. But if they make gold illegal and that's what you got, then you can't use it because if you did, it would be a crime. <laughs> so convert it to silver or diamonds or jade or something, you know. Now they just spent and wasted 30 billion dollars in Iran and uh, Afghanistan. And they're taking SSI, 150 dollars away from me every month to, to pay for their dumb mistake. I think there should be a law any time the military wants money they have to come, for it, come to Congress for it in one million dollar increments. None of this, you know, here's 50 billion dollars, do whatever you want. No. No. These congressmen today, they do that because they're going to get kickbacks so they can campaign and they don't have to call up people and say, hey, please send me 20 bucks so I can get reelected. They get this money from corporations and maybe from the Pentagon, I don't know. Our whole system has gone corrupt. So, you know, I've learned this from Tom Hartman and from other commentators on the radio and on TV. So I'm just passing along the word that uh, if you want to correct our country, we got to have Tom Hartman for president. That's all, that's all there is to it. And then there's Bernie Sanders and, what is it, Dennis Kucinich? They seem to be about the only people in America who knows what's really going on and how to fix things. So, these these Republicans who came come on TV and they start talking, they look mealy-mouthed. They have a dead fish-eye look in their eye. It's like they know they're doing rotten, dirty things to the American people, but the American people are too asleep to figure it out. So wake up, people. Get rid of all the politicians in Congress and vote in regular working people to take their place. And this, the last chance you have will be in November of 2012. Wake up.